So, good morning. I think it's morning, right? So, we are in a beautiful Brooklyn here in New York City. We're at the Vegan Women's Summit. You are Michelle Rees. I want you to introduce to the audience, I'm Dr. Colin Zhu. I'm host of the Thrive Bites podcast as well as the Chef Doc YouTube channel. And I want to introduce to our audience who you are, what you represent or who you represent, and what is your company about? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Michelle Ruiz, and I am the CEO and one of the co-founders of Haife. My background, I'm Ecuadorian. My background, I immigrated to the U.S. when I was seven. Love it. Grew up in Miami, did the whole like American dream thing, and now I'm working on a company that I hope is going to be honestly like the unlock to the production of sustainable products. What my company does is we use waste, wasted nutrients that are lost in food manufacturing water by the billions of kilograms every single year. And we use those nutrients. Think about like a can of chickpeas. When you open it up, there's like the aquafaba inside. That kind of like sugary water is considered waste at food manufacturing, but it is perfectly food safe and it's full of nutrients. And we use that to power really low cost fermentation processes that are making incredibly sustainable products. So think about it. You could be making a whey product without using the animal with a fraction of the carbon footprint than a cow. And you could be making it using precision fermentation. But one of the things that's keeping these products from s competing in the market and reaching price parity, which is honestly like you reach price parity or you don't make it at all, is the cost of their inputs. Right now, a lot of these processes are run using sugar from crops like corn, sugar beets, etc., that are really expensive and just like extremely volatile pricing related to just like global events, their commodities. And we can feed these processes at a fraction of the cost in a really stable matter and a carbon negative way. So, yeah, working to become the unlock for biomanufacturing at large. What is the negative effects when you are wasting that said product and you know, yeah, what is it? What is it a negative effect when you don't use it because it's being what thrown out? Yeah, thrown away. I mean, think about it like at the factory before we can beans, for example, or when we're crushing tomatoes, we're creating tomato juice or we're, you know, kind of like making bean water that just has a lot of nutrients in it. And at large, wastewater contributes one and a half percent of global greenhouse gas emissions. We generate a hundred trillion gallons of wastewater in the world. That's what it's called, wastewater, but we know it's not like nasty. And that's really kind of our secret, right? Like everybody thinks wastewater is waste, except there's this like one little sliver that's like gold. Yeah. And it can contributes one and a half percent of greenhouse gas emissions, which is like the same as palm oil. Isn't that crazy? We don't talk about it enough. And it's almost the same as aviation. So it's a, a big it's a, it's a big deal if you're able to like, you know, recycle it. Yeah, but I'll tell you, so that's the first part, right? We're able to upcycle some of these nutrients, but then we're able to use them to make biomanufacturing lower cost. And biomanufacturing can make like essential goods that are responsible for 60% of global emissions. And so by enabling the manufacturing of really sustainable products, like we're enabling like pretty big decarbonization, even outside just wastewater reduction. That's awesome. So your background is in chemical engineer. You're a female, right? You identify as a female. What does that mean in terms of the landscape, the industry of where you're at, and who you get to inspire as a role model? Oh, yeah. Okay. Being, so my background is in chemical engineering. I've been in the industry for a decade. I studied chemi at Carnegie Mellon and then worked for ExxonMobil for a decade. Yeah, before kind of moving into like more of a sustainable like climate tech space. It was the most incredible experience because I spent that entire time in ma manufacturing, either in like a B2B sales role where I was going into like literally any factory you can think of, whether you're making gummy bears to making metallic parts for cars or paper, whatever it is. And as a woman, I had to learn how to communicate with industries that are predominantly run by men, especially when it's it's not just like at a corporate level, but it's also at the manufacturing level. And what it's done for me is help me understand my customer really well and help me see a clear line of like a clear path to like women also being able to absolutely dominate my manufacturing spaces and tough tech spaces as well. Which is incredible. And I think that like what I want to inspire is for more women to see this as an option because we need 
all of the talent and all of the drive and all of the resilience, which is what comes with being a female in tech. Yeah, a lot of that. A lot of that. And we need that to fight climate change. Yeah. So that's what I want. For sure, for sure. Why come to the Vegan Women Summit? I absolutely love this community. I think there is so much power with being surrounded by people who are passionate about fighting climate change, but then also passionate about bringing together the community to support each other. And I think that that's something that I really admire about Jenny. She's a connector. I'm a connector. And I think being part of these events is kind of like a little shock to your system every year that tells you like people that you're working with really care about making a change in the world. And you're one of those people. So I like being close. Nice. One last thing, if someone in the audience, you know, wants to have one takeaway from you, what can they do, you know, as a consumer, just living everyday life from your perspective, what can they change? You know what, like, start looking at really cool products that people are building that are so much more sustainable than what we're used to. Right now, it's only going to cost a couple more dollars per unit that you buy. But in the future, it's going to get better. And I am so inspired by the companies that are pouring in their entire life and energy and soul and a lot of money into making products that are incredibly good for this planet. And we need consumers to support that. And that's my, my one takeaway is like, do, do your part and have so much fun doing it too. Awesome. Awesome. High five to that. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming and I wish you the best of luck and much success to all your endeavors. Thank you so much. Likewise.